Welcome to worship with us today. Please know that whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you're welcome here at First Congregational United Church of Christ in Madison, Wisconsin. We are glad that you joined us today, either here in the sanctuary or by live stream. The bulletin with community prayers and hymn notes is available by scanning the QR code on your mobile device at any of the entrances. We will celebrate the Sacrament of Communion today in worship. If you did not bring your own elements, individual packets of wafer and juice can be found at any of the entrances. A gluten-free option is also available. The labyrinth in the chapel is available after worship until 1 today. We also invite you to join us this afternoon as First Congregational hosts the Ecclesiastical Council for Christina Shane Wetter. An ecclesiastical council is the final step to approve an individual for ordained ministry in the United Church of Christ. It will be held in the chapel at 3 p.m. All are invited to attend. This week you will be receiving the annual report via electronic email. If you need a hard copy, please let the office know. A congregational conversation will be offered in the chapel next Sunday after worship. The annual meeting of the congregation will be held after worship on Sunday, June 25th, in person in the chapel and by Zoom. We hope you plan to attend. Let us now enter our time of worship together. stand in body or spirit as we join in our call to worship. O oh, divine voice, 
you sing and the universe comes into being. O oh, divine breath, you breathe and all things spring to life. O oh, divine word, you call and creation is sustained. O oh, divine flesh, you are born among us and the creator is clothed in creation. O oh, divine spirit, you contain all that has been formed. O oh, divine life, you are the pulse of all that is. And so in faith and expectation, in wonder and celebration, we gather to remember this mystery. In you all things live and move and have being. In all things you live and move and express your divine artistry. And so we join with creation in the eternal song of worship and devotion. Justice and kindness make for peace. Justice and kindness are for healing the hurt in ourselves, the hurt in our relationships, and the hurt in our world. We offer that peace to one another now with these words. May the peace of God be with us all. You're invited to greet your neighbors with a wave. Please join me in our unison prayer. We are a world that is desperate for you, God. When powers struggle for dominance and war, oppression, and abuse result, when groups of people oppose one another because of ideology, religion, or culture, we need a God who is bigger than ourselves and our personal interests. When people are discarded and devalued because of poverty, geography, or disease, when compassion and justice is withheld to some because of sexuality, 
race, or gender. We need a savior who is more compassionate than we are, who includes even those we would exclude. When resources are mismanaged and abused, and the world and its creatures are destroyed, when motivation is scarce and reactivity is in short supply to address the challenges that we face, we need a spirit who is more powerful and more creative than we could ever be. God, loving Savior, empowering spirit, we offer you these prayers because we need you so desperately. Captivate us, call us, and fill us, that we may be carriers of your eternal life to this world that you love so dearly. Amen. You may be seated. I invite those who brought bikes to come and stand by their bike. If you did not bring your bike, please open your hands when we receive the blessing so that you all can take that blessing back to your bike at home. We have with us many bikes this morning of all different types and people of all different types. Bikes can have one or multiple wheels, but all forms are dependent upon the wheel and those making the wheels turn. Some of us feel closer to God on a bike than we do in a pew. Sometimes the greatest joy in our life is found while riding a bike. When we ride, a connection to other riders is marked by a nod and felt in a way that no one could ever explain. Wheels play a prominent role in the first chapter of Ezekiel, a reading from the prophet Ezekiel. When the living creatures moved, the wheels moved beside them. And when the living creatures rose from the earth, the wheels rose. Wherever the spirit would go, they went, and the wheels rose along with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When they moved, the others moved. When they stopped, the others stopped. And when they rose from the earth, the wheels rose along with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Holy wisdom from holy words. Thanks be to God. I would invite you to join me in prayer. Each petition will end with God of life. Please respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. In a world groaning under the excesses of consumption, we acknowledge the inherent goodness of one, two, three, four wheeled transportation and give thanks for the simple beauty of the cycle. God of life. Yeah. Present in a community filled with children, we pray for those learning to ride. Keep them smart, safe, and visible on their neighborhood roads. God of life, yeah. hear our prayer. Present in a community filled with strife, we pray for the victims of road rage and bike theft, and we ask for the strength to forgive people. God of life, hear our prayer. Present in a world of work, we pray for those who build, repair, and clean our bikes, and those who rely on their bikes to earn their living. Bless those who choose to be different in their ride to work, and those for whom driving isn't even an option. God of life, Hear our prayer. Present in a community of beautiful diversity, we ask your protection and blessing on all who ride, those who use for primary transportation, those who ride to raise funds for charities, those who are athletes, those who lack motorized transportation, 
or funds for public transportation, students, children, and all the others who take to the streets, bike paths, parks, and mountains. Keep us safe as we ride. God of life. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now receive this blessing as we pray for you and your bike. And again, those of you who didn't bring your bike, please open your hands to receive this blessing. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May all your journeying be joyous. And until we meet again, may God hold you and your bikes in the palm of God's hand. Go in peace and safety. Amen. You may be seated. We now invite all the children to come forward. Come on up and have a seat on the steps. Come on up. While they're coming up, if anybody wants a tour of the building, I'm giving a tour right after worship. Meet you in the narthex. See the mysteries and hear about the histories of First Kong, included in the hidden, hidden staircase. So, all right. It is so great to see you. I have something for each and every one of you today. Because you came today, you get a treat. Come on up. Not everybody gets one. If you have a sibling, you can take one for them too. Okay. I got plenty. Okay. Very good. Oh, you get one too. Come on up. All right. Have a seat. All right. Oh, one more. One for everybody. Here you go, Marta. She can have another one. I got extra. Okay. So good. Now, what did Jeff hand out to you? A potato. A potato. All right. Yes. That is our lesson for today. A potato. What do we know about potatoes? Elliot. They grow underground. They grow underground. Very good. James? In the roots, right? They're tubers. They're in the roots. But I know anything else about the potatoes? Okay, they're really good. All right, so what can we do with potatoes? What are some things we can make with potatoes? Sam? French fries. French fries. Okay, I got a picture of French fries. Anybody else? Elliot? Baked potatoes. Baked potatoes. I got a picture of a baked potato in here somewhere. Do you like baked potatoes? Do you like baked potatoes? Yes, baked potatoes. Okay, James? Mashed potatoes. I got a picture of mashed potatoes. Who doesn't love mashed potatoes? Alice, what, how do you like your potatoes? French fries. French fries. Okay, very good. Marta, were you going to say something? Mashed potatoes. Hash browns. We got hash browns. Very good. Okay, how many of you like tater tots? Yeah. Okay, like tater tots. That's really cool. Yes. Okay. And did you know that you can make bags out of potatoes? No. They're like plastic-like bags, like shopping bags. You know when you go to the grocery store and those, those plastic bags? You can make those bags out of potatoes. How many, did you, how many of you knew that? Didn't. Okay. So potatoes have a lot of good things. There's so many things that come out of potatoes, but we always have to remember it comes from the potato, whether we're eating tater tots or hash browns or mashed potatoes or baked potatoes or french fries or whatever, it always goes back to the potato. That's why I gave you a potato. Now, inside potatoes is a, is a nutrient that we all, we all need, and it's called 
potassium. Potassium. Say that with me. Potassium. Right. It's potassium. And potassium helps our muscles work better, and most importantly, it helps our heart work better. Okay, so potassium are, is very important. Now, do you know what they, in the, the what is that big table of, of, what is it, elements, whatever it's called, anybody know what I'm talking about? The periodic table, thank you, thank you, Amartya's mom. Okay, it's listed as a K. Okay, long story, I don't know why, some German guy said, we'll, we'll call it K. It's potassium, but we'll call it K. Okay, so if you're looking up at the big table, periodic table, and if you're looking for potassium, it's listed under K. Now, you know a word starts with K, and this is the word we're going to talk about today? Kindness. Kindness. This is what Jesus was talking about. Whatever you do when you're working out and following and doing what Jesus would do, always remember the kindness. If you're going to help somebody, do it with kindness. If you're going to teach somebody something, do it with kindness. If you're going to love somebody, do it with kindness. So what's the important word today? Kindness. Kindness, right. Kindness. Whatever we do in life, whatever we do in life, we should do it with kindness. Sort of like tater tots and and mashed potatoes and baked potatoes and french fries, they all go back to what? The potato. Whatever we do when we're doing Jesus' work should go back to kindness. So take that potato home and remember that. Don't leave it in your, under your bed or anything like that, okay? You can, you can eat that potato. It's, it's good potato, okay? All right, let's pray. Loving God who gave us the kindness and the wonderfulness of potatoes, sometimes hidden below the surface, and we have to dig them up, always remind us that even below the surface, we should fill our lives and share your love with kindness. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Thank you very much. Enjoy your potatoes. Our reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians 13, verses 11 through 13, and this is a new revised standard version, updated edition. I think an important message. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Be restored. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Thus ends our reading. Let us pray. May the words that come from all of our mouths and the meditation that lives deep in all of our hearts be found acceptable in the sight of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Dr. Richard Pratt, Jr. wrote, One of the things that separates good leaders from celebrities is that celebrities often believe their press. They think more of themselves than they should. Leaders, however, know their limits and understand that they are not all that others think they are 
or want them to be. At Corinth, Paul faced a problem with celebrities. The Christians at Corinth were dividing the church by pledging their loyalties to different celebrities. Each group claimed to be better than the other, and party spirits began to grow in the church. One of the celebrities was Paul himself. Some believers at Corinth actually claimed to be his follower. Paul, however, was a good leader. He knew better than to believe those who wanted to make him a celebrity and insisted that believers should follow only one person, Christ himself. Paul responds to what is happening in Corinth by writing several letters to the Corinthians. Today our text comes from the very end of the second letter to the Corinthians. But it's important to know a little bit about what's happening in Corinth to understand Paul's words. The second letter to the Corinthians may have been switched a bit. Chapter 10 quite possibly could have been written prior to the first chapter. Chapter 10 may have been the first response to the Corinthians not changing from his first visit to Corinth. Carla Works reminds us of what Paul is seeing in Corinth. In chapter 10, the tone of the letter changes to a defense against the teaching of the so-called super apostles. As the letter draws to a close, Paul is still stung by the changes of his opponents, and the Corinthians fail to commend him. He warns that a third visit will be a painful time of mourning over those who continue to harm the community. By now, the vices that he lists are no surprise. Quarreling, jealousy, anger, selfishness, slander, gossip, conceit, disorder. First Church Corinth is a community torn by factions. In fact, the Corinthians' divisiveness has taken center stage since the first letter. In 1 Corinthians, the apostle writes, Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement that there be no divisions among you, but you be united in the same mind and the same purpose, 1 Corinthians. In the closing of 2 Corinthians, the apostle expresses the same wish. Mend your ways, agree with one another, and live in peace. For Paul, agreeing with one another, or more literally, thinking the same way, should not be read as an appeal to uniformity. The apostle has recognized and has applauded the diversity of this congregation. Rather, this appeal to think the same way is an appeal to think according to Christ Jesus, or to have the same mind as Christ when he voluntarily humbled himself and died for the sake of the world. Having that kind of love for one another will facilitate living at peace and mending the factions that have torn this congregation. In short, the presence of joy and peace are the indicators of the Spirit's transformative work to reveal God's kingdom. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Paul's closing in 2 Corinthians is not simply an appeal for the church to get along. It is an exhortation for the Corinthians to be the new creation that the Spirit is equipping them to be. Greeting one another with a holy kiss is a tangible way to show love and fellowship in this community of folks 
who are still struggling to love one another and who are still learning how to be Christ's body in the world. This exhortation is common in Paul's letters, as is the reminder that there are other saints elsewhere who send their love. What Paul is seeing in Corinth is not much different than we experience in the world we live in today. There are celebrities who really believe their own press. Society and the church are being divided by loyalty to different celebrities. Each group is claiming to be better than another group. There is quarreling, jealousy, anger, selfishness, slander, gossip, conceit. There is upstaging, and unfortunately, there is belittling, name-calling, lying, and total disrespect for one another. What is important for us to understand in this text is Paul's response. Paul is committed to emulating Christ's love for all. Paul encourages the Corinthians to stay the course and do so with love, compassion, and kindness. Paul says, be restored. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. None of us are free of the celebrities pulling our attention today. None of us are free of the quarreling, the name calling, the backbiting, or the lying. Not much has changed. Like Paul, we can name what is happening, but our response should be one of kindness. It might seem easier to respond in retaliation, but it's actually easier and healthier for us to respond with kindness. I'm not saying we all need to respond with a kiss on the cheek. Ah, sigh of relief. But there is proof that Paul's enthusiasm, rejoicing, and kindness pays off. While kindness has a connotation of someone being weak or naive, that's not the case. Kindness is an interpersonal skill. It requires courage and strength. There are many ways to be kind and countless opportunities to practice this positive trait. TEDx speaker Vindi TJ wrote, when we understand and accept our shared humanity, our empathy increases. We realize that by helping others, those near and dear to us, as well as those who aren't directly connected to us, we're actually helping ourselves. Kindness is not only a valuable, valuable life hack, it's a deep one. Think about the list of real and potential benefits that come with your commitment to kindness. It provides you with deep emotional satisfaction. It gives you spiritual well-being and a life with deeper meaning. It boosts your health. Your happy hormones increase when you help others. Your stress hormones decrease when you know you're supported. It grants you increased knowledge and understanding as you connect with different people and situations around the world. It affords you the chance to express gratitude for all you have by sharing it with others. It gives you problem-solving practice and ways to express 
your creativity. It presents you with occasions to share your time, energy, and expertise for meaningful causes. And it provides you with ways to learn about yourself and what interests you. Kindness is both a mindset and a habit. Once adopted, opportunities to practice it appear out of nowhere in every moment, in every day of every year. Over a lifetime, small acts of kindness add up to a lot of good. TJ considers two quotes from the Dalai Lama when she needs inspiration to show kindness. The first, we are driven by self-interest. It is necessary to survive, but we need wise self-interest that is generous and cooperative, taking others' interests into account. Cooperation comes from friendship. Friendship comes from trust. Trust comes from kind-heartedness. Once you have a genuine sense of concern for others, there's no room for cheating, bullying, or exploitation. And the second, if you remember nothing else today, if you think you are too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we have been and will be faced with situations that challenge our ability to show kindness. May we take a moment, just one moment, to center ourselves, to respond with words and actions of kindness. Greet one another with peace and kindness, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Let us be the new creation. The Spirit is equipping us to be. Amen.
faithful one. We come to your table hungry for a taste of your kingdom. In a world where evil and empire come together to hoard and exploit, we crave the fruits of your spirit. We long for kindness. We dream of peace. We hope to be disciples of generosity, sharing and redistributing the resources you intended for the flourishing of all. Gathering at your table, we remember the ordinary gifts of heaven among us, those that nurture hope when it's hard to find, that surprise us in destruction's wake, that bring new life from sites of death, and sustain our labors of love across generations. In awe and gratitude, we praise you, source of abundance. Since the beginning, you have been building a lineage of love and liberation, inviting all who wish to belong. Through the saints and the prophets, you call us to turn from the temptation of power and individualism, to deepen our commitments to building communities of care and justice, and to practice a more radical solidarity across identities and communities so that none must struggle alone. You have shown us the way and taken on flesh and dwelled among us. In Jesus, we come to understand God enfleshed as a brown Jewish Palestinian man, a refugee born into a frowned upon familial structure with neither security of wealth nor access to power. His life is a witness to hope that does not come from climbing ladders of power or begging for crumbs of dignity. Hope that is born in community, nurturing love, taking risks together, multiplying what we have, and finding it is more than enough. Jesus shared a meal with his companions, his community, his chosen family, before he would be arrested. Filled with love for them, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, he took the cup blessed it and shared it, saying, this cup that is poured out is the new covenant. In, remem in remembrance of Jesus, executed by the state, faithful to the end, we embrace this mystery of our faith. Let us pray together. Gracious one, may, may your, your spirit be poured out upon, upon these elements. elements. May, may this, this bread and this cup, cup be for us a revival of hope and a renewal of courage as we encounter your presence among the ordinary gifts of life. Through the grace of your sustenance, may Christ enter and be with us. Amen. The bread of life. May, may we, we be filled. filled. The cup of blessing quenching our thirst. Please receive the bread and cup. Let us pray. God of persistence, though you have been betrayed many times, you still do not give up on love. Evil is relentless, but so too 
is your belief in us, in our ability to be transformed, to turn from dominance, to mend and repair where harm has been done. May we, too, believe in our potential for co-creating with you a future of flourishing for all life. We give thanks for this meal, a reminder of your unending grace and abiding companionship. We join our voices together in our common prayer, saying, Our, our Creator, Creator, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. My name is Laura Stevenson. I use she, her pronouns, and I am here representing the Outreach Board. I don't know about you, but one of the reasons why I really love coming to church is because I get to be in a community of people who share the love of God with me, and they give me support, and together, when we put our minds, our bodies, our souls together, we are stronger. And today, we're, t we're asking for the giving for the strengthening the church, which is in that same spirit. The Strength in the Church offering reflects the shared commitment of people across the United Church of Christ to cooperatively build up the UCC. Conferences and the national setting equally share the gifts given by members and friends through their local congregations. The funds raised support leadership development, new churches, youth ministry, and innovation in existing congregations. By your generosity to this offering, you build up the body of Christ. As God calls our congregations to be the church in many new ways, your small acts of kindness, as Aldana mentioned, will plant new churches, awaken new ideas in the existing churches, and develop the spiritual life of our youth and our young adults. Thank you for your kindness.
Let us pray. Like the gifts of creation, we are all stewards of what we possess. And like the gifts of creation, they are not to be kept to ourselves, but shared in kindness with those who are hungry and lonely, those who are lost and are struggling. God, as we offer our gifts today, receive our thanks and praise in the name of Jesus, our brother. Amen. In all of our interactions, we have the choice to be kind. Kindness is not an act of weakness. Kindness is the strength to center ourselves, look into another person's eyes, recognize that they are a child of God, and offer a hand of love. It doesn't mean we neglect our values. It means we see the possibilities of how kindness might just open closed doors. In Ralph Waldo Emerson's words, you cannot do a kindness too soon. You never know how soon it will be too late. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. 